Okay, hello everyone, welcome to Pro AV Live. Sorry for the slightly delayed start, we just had a few technical issues which we were ironing out, but we have got a very exciting one today. We've got a huge amount of new products, new cameras on the market, obviously a couple of weeks ago it would have been under normal circumstances NAB. And so all of the product announcements that manufacturers have been waiting to release, um, they sort of mostly kept to the same time frame. So we saw quite a lot of new products and new cameras and new announcements over the last same month. And so I've invited onto this stream, Philip Bloom to give us a little bit of a breakdown on his thoughts. Hello, Phil. Welcome. Thank Hello. you for joining us. You're welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. How have you been? How have things been treating you? Every day is Sunday. <laughs> yeah yeah it's just a massive blur the weeks seem to you know before you know it, the week has just gone through and you're like mm. yeah. but it doesn't make what a happened? huge it just doesn't make a huge difference you know i've only been outside uh like twice in a month and a half as in yeah, i've been outside in my garden and stuff about so but it's you know yeah same here the new I mean, normal so i've been used to going to the office every single day you know, I've, I've had to go in every now and again just to pick up something you know or check something over um and i went in yesterday and saw my boss and my manager for the first time in about seven weeks <laughs> this is somebody i normally see every single day in person uh, it, it's just bizarre it's just really bizarre this place this situation we're all in but anyway as as, we're not here to talk about that as long as your your key fob still lets you into the building you it know does. you've still got a job they could still it, be making you feel the lives and yet. not tell you yeah oh, don't put that seed of thought into my head phil <laughs> <laughs> right we have got some rather nice cameras to talk about i'm assuming you've been following all the news over the last um month or so new cameras yeah, have you, have you just been you've been Tell watching me. Netflix. <laughs> well, I'll fool you. In. Retro. I've, I'm back to be the cam SP these days. <laughs> you won't touch anything that isn't 540p. Okay. Um, throughout the, all of this, by the way, we have no structure to this. Everyone watching, I, I don't know if you can tell already, but we don't know what we're doing. We haven't got a plan. We haven't got an itinerary or PowerPoint presentation to run through or anything like that. We're just going to sit and chat for about an hour or so about all of these new things. And we would above all like to involve you guys in the conversation. So leave it in the comment section, in the chat, in wherever you are, whether you're watching this on Facebook, whether you're watching it on YouTube, and I'll be able to see and we will involve you in the conversation. But for now, which one do you want to start with, Phil? Which camera do you reckon? Well, the A7S three that was just announced. <laughs> dun, dun, Joking. Dun. What is it? Sixteen K? <laughs> no, they've they've actually they're actually sticking with four K. Did you not know that they're sticking with four K, but they're doing it at uh, thousand frames per second. So <laughs> it's pretty amazing. An ISO six billion. So you can actually shoot with a lens cap on. It's incredible. <laughs> Right, let's start with some Canon, shall we? Um, some Canon actually, bother, yeah, yes. Let, let's, um, let's change tags. Let's completely change tags, actually. I've changed my mind already. Let's start with Sony, um, since you mentioned the Sony. Um, because this is a camera that I know that you know, because you own one. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's just, I'm not using it right now. It was my webcam, but I've set up a semi-permanent live setup uh, on various mm -hmm. arms and stuff. And... First off, you know, it's it's I don't want to just tie it down onto that. And secondly, the yeah. arm wouldn't take it. But it is still here because I'm still using it for filming. Um, I'm on an A7 III now because um, I need great autofocus. But the the FX9, I love. And the the, uh, you know, the, the announcements for the version two firmware uh, mm -hmm. are, are great. They, you know, a lot of my issues, not all of them, but a certain number of them have been from my review have been addressed which is you know really important and you know for me the touch screen for the autofocus yeah. is essential that that to me was the biggest thing problem. that and the raw maybe but yeah. that was the biggest thing from this announcement is yeah. that i mean it's just the rumors such, were right it was a touch screen let me, let, let me just grab my oh, just grab my camera here oh it's this it so i've actually i don't have it yet the firmware but I set up, you see my review, I set up my uh, screen at the back because I use um, a Zakuto EVF anyway. So it's all set up ready for autofocus. Um, 
because that's the problem. If you're going to be using it as a monitor, as a viewfinder, you're not going to be able to use a touch screen anyway. So having it over here is perfect. And it just it just means we're going to have, oh, let me put the camera down, tracking autofocus on subjects, which is on objects, which is great. But the other thing is quick access to menus and certain things, because the menus are atrocious as always. And it looks like a really nice interface. So yeah. those look great. So I'm glad they didn't announce that was coming, but it's something that I bugged them. From the very first day that I picked up that camera in September, beginning of September, I think it was, I was like, I was touching the screen and this Absolutely. was with the Sony engineers around me. I'm like, you need to make that work yeah. because autofocus without that, it's really hard. It's great for when you only want face detect. So say you're doing an interview and you're, you want to turn mm. face detect on or off. Great. You can put a signable button on it. You don't need to touch the screen. It knows where the faces are. Fine. Yeah. Absolutely fine. Yeah. If you're doing anything other than that, if you're doing B-roll of any kind or tracking groups of people, anything like that, the touch screen makes it so yeah. much easier. Yeah, it's it's uh, uh, and the fact that it was a touch. I don't know whether it was ever planned initially, but the fact that the panel was a touch panel was yep. just when when I found that out, I was like, okay, this is a no brainer, guys. You need to actually enable this. And so yeah, yeah, that's and then the other parts of the firmware we have, it's good but bad, and that's the raw, uh, yep. ProRes raw. It's great that we're going to have ProRes raw. It's bad that we have to use the expensive enormous xdca back yeah which we knew because it's the hardware is not in the basic camera to yeah. pump out the raw signal unlike an fs5 from five years ago <laughs> so that's frustrating so yeah. and i've been nagging them about this as well it's like please bring out an xdca back that's the size of the one of the fs7 and yeah. similar price because we don't need the audio uh, you know the wireless slot in just bring that size down and that'd be great because yeah. um, that would be a, a nice addition. And the the, the uh, slot in was... audio is great for the people that use slot in audio, but the majority of people, I think, don't. Yeah. Um, no. And the, I th I'm very confident that the raw um, is going to be very good from it. I think the, the concept of taking 16 bit down to 12 bit um, log, yeah. or, um, rather than 16 bit linear would be comes across really nicely. We've had some great chats with Alice Chapman about breaking down the technical part of it. And it sounds really exciting. Mm. It should be really good quality raw. But the difference yeah. between shooting physically with an FX9 and then FX9 with a raw, because you've got to add the XTCA back and then you've got to add a Shogun 7 on the top. Mm. It's going to be yeah. a camera this size down to a camera this size. It's, it's going to be a huge yeah. difference. And with the audio, you know, I have the UWPD, which go yep. on the MI shoe. And that's yep. a great audio solution. I'm sure they'll have a dual receiver for that soon. They already do one for the analog version. And so I just don't make, make yeah, and it is a shame. It's could they do ProRes raw internally? I mean, that's partly a legal discussion and partly a technical discussion. So that's the problem, isn't it, really? It's, um, you know, when yeah, we I mean, have there must be a way Canon are like, doing raw. So yeah, but they do, but it's, it's that whole thing about what defines raw if it and it comes yeah. down to legality of the patent of red yeah. and whether it's debayered if i think i think it i think the patent is something like if it's debayered not debayered and recorded internally then it infringes on the patent but if it's if it's like b raw um from black magic yeah. and, and cinema raw light which i believe is also debayered um internally in the camera is that right the cinema raw light. Uh, I, lo I lose track to be brutally honest um, but i think that's the way they can do it because it's the only you know mm. sony were the ones who kind of were the, i think were the first company to fall foul of that patent and with the yeah. f55 and so um it's um you know it'd be great to have raw but you know for me it's, i don't ne really need it i just want a really good codec and um it's it's something that i would love to see in the fx9 is the codec is fine i just want it to be better in that it's so something that can that can record in 6k if it needs to and something that can record in a higher frame rate than 4k 60 because the xavc i codec is limited to both the 60p 4k and it's you know it's also the xqd cards but it's the same size as cf express cards so hopefully one you know we may whether it's in version two or version three 
I think this camera is capable of being upgraded to a much, much better camera. And I hope it does. It's Hopefully. still great as it is, but we always want it to be better. The other thing that we saw, this is Cinema 5D's article, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know. Um, the, is um, some increase to the, fi the, uh, the frame rates. Can't speak today. Um, so in this version 2 firmware upgrade, we'll get um, DCI 4K now, which is nice. We'll get 50 and 60p, but not full frame with this 5K crop mode. 1.2 uh, crop, I believe. Isn't something it? like mm. that, yeah. And then um, 1080p in full frame, but downsampled or line skipped with some description, but you'll get 180 frames a second. Yeah. I think this was the stuff that was previously announced, wasn't it? It's, yeah, we, we, knew, we yeah. knew that this was sort of coming, but we didn't know the ins and outs, the, the exact details. Mm. They've given us a few teases, like um, that 120, 180p would be coming. But we didn't know about the yeah. 5K crop mode, I don't think. Does that bother no, you? No, no, it was definitely, it was, that was always announced in there. It was, was always it? in there. It was like, yeah, it was a little asterisk in, on the mm -hmm. roadmap. Um, and then at the bottom it said, uh, will be 5K um, crop. But it, it does bother me. Well, ideally, I wouldn't want it. Of course I wouldn't want it. It's not an enormous crop, but it's enough to make a difference. So it's a shame that it can't do a full frame 50p, 50p, 60p. <laughs> so I don't know whether that's technically possible. Um, again, it's ho hopefully something that they can improve upon later. Absolutely. It's not the most important thing. Slow motion is never the most important thing. It's about normal speed, but when you yeah, want it, this, I want this it always speed. surprises me when I hear you talk about these things because, of course, a lot of the work that you release publicly on your YouTube channel and stuff like that is slow motion. It tends to be what mm -hmm. we all have in our heads as. Philip Bloom shoots a lot of slow motion. But of course, that's not your actual work, is it? That's just your little no. passion projects that you're, you're sharing out there for us to watch. Well, those, yeah, those are just me just going out and being, having some fun creatively. Um, yeah. My actual, you know, you actually look at my, my actual proper broadcast work and documentary work and stuff. It's limited, very limited amounts of slow motion at all. Yeah. Um, it's, it's used in moderation because it needs to be. Yeah. Uh, I love slow motion because of the way it captures uh natural moments and it makes things much more poetic i think is the yep. best way of putting it um and so you know if i you know so if i get a camera that's capable of 180 frames per second in 4k then i'm going to shoot with that i'm not going to go out and test it in 25p i'm going to go and shoot in 180 frames 4k because that's exciting it's like yep. I don't know, this is what i want to see of course i want to see what the normal speed looks like but for it, it is fun for me, I like enjoy. I, li I like it, and of course, if you're shooting 50p, it's really easy to just bring up to 25, 25p yourself. But yeah, fingers crossed, um, we're going to have that. Um, but I'm happy that their firmware is including things that we want to be in there, um, and they are coming. I mean, we'll still be lo you know in lockdown in October probably, so mm. I look forward to doing some tests with my cats. At home. Yeah. <laughs> Right, let's change tacks a little bit and talk about Canon. Um, before we do that, I, I am seeing everyone's comments coming in and questions. I'm going to hold some of them selectively because we might answer them anyway as we naturally talk about the cameras in the future. Um, there's a nice little point there from James Dobson, though. It says, tell Philip that his cinematic masterclass helped me keep me sane and busy since COVID. I really appreciate his work, which I thought was nice. Just chuck that Thank into you very the much. conversation. That. Okay, so let's talk about Canon. Canon have released this, the C300 What's Mark III. Mm. C300 Mark III. So, update to their C300 Mark II. Uh, it's 4K. It's basically the same body as the C500, um, but with a super 35mm sensor, just like the C300 line has always been. Um, and it looks... I am super excited about this camera. I really, really am. What are your thoughts? Why from? more this than the C500 Mark II? Which one well, excites you more? I'm excited about both. And um, to be fair, I've had access to the C500 Mark II. I've been using it in the showroom and I've been shooting with it a lot. Whereas this is, so for me, that's a camera I already know. This is the new kid on the block and I'm a camera nerd. I like new kids on the box. But, but, are, but 
but what makes this excite you that the C500 Mark II doesn't do? Because I know there's obviously one key feature that it does. The one key feature is the slow motion. Um, the yeah. other key feature yeah. is the dual gain ISO, uh, not dual gain ISO, sorry, dual yeah. gain output. I think that's very important yeah. that we don't call it dual gain ISO because that's really misleading. It's, it's a dual gain output sensor. Um, now we need to test this. People need to get the C500 and the C300 in the same room, which hasn't happened yet properly, and see what the difference in noise levels. Because in some, is that DGO just simply a way of getting this, this, the quality that they're already getting from the full frame sensor of the C500 in the Super 35 sensor, or is it potentially mm. better than the, C, the, than the full frame one in the C500? Because it doesn't have that. We, we need to see. Um, but obviously there's advantages of full frame beyond that. People like the look, the feel, the different <laughs> lenses they can use, all the rest of it. Um, yeah. But so, I mean, mm, mm -hmm. excuse me, I think for me. And, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about this before you and I, it's just that. So my first full frame um, proper video camera, mm -hmm. Marvo LF, which I've had for like a year and a half. Yeah. And since I got that the appeal of buying a, an expensive super 35 mil camera has just dropped off because this camera does both sure yeah it switches yeah. Also it goes to everything it goes to you know to micro four thirds as well it goes to 6k 5k and micro four thirds and super 16 hd whatever with all these different crops so it has all these cameras built you know in in one my fx9 switches to super 35 as well so i can still use my fujinon mk lenses and currently that's where i can shoot the 50p 60p Absolutely. So mm -hmm. the C500 Mark II is way more interesting to me because it's a full frame camera, but it doesn't have very good slow motion capability. As much yeah. as I just talked about how I don't need it that much, I still want it. If you take it away from me, I'm going to complain. If you give it to me, <laughs> I'm not going to use it a huge amount. So the fact is I am limited to 60p with the C500 Mark II. Um, and if I want to go higher, I have to go to a Super 16 crop, which is a massive crop from full frame. Because, you know, that I have that with the, the Marvo. And, you know, I, I use it and it's OK. Yep. I am so dis if, if the C500 Mark II had a Super 35 mil mode with 120 frames per second 4K it would be magnificent. Yep. And it's a shame that the C300 Mark II does something better than their higher end camera which is frustrating so and i think we talked about this ages ago on our first live god knows how many weeks ago that was now but it was like with the um i can't remember what i was about to talk about is oh yeah the mount it's the mount isn't it so yeah uh, i have a crap load i would have used the s word but it's like 2 30 p.m whatever it is so we have, i have a crap load of ef lenses i have one rf lens because i do have a a, a canon uh What's it called? EOS R. EOS R. There we go. I've got one. I haven't invested in any more money in lenses because I've been waiting for a proper pro body from them for that. And I'm looking forward to that. But their new their RF lenses are fantastic. They're just beautiful lenses. This is yeah. what they they're, you know, way nicer than Nikon new lenses, way more exciting than Sony's uh full frame lenses. They're just, you know, they they're groundbreaking. So to, to have a camera like the uh, the C500 Mark II, which won't take it. And of course, with a C300, it's less so because it's a crop sensor anyway, so you're not going to get the full benefit of them. But I just feel, come on, guys, bring out a nice cinema camera that takes your magnificent new lenses. That's what I want to see. So that's why I'm kind of more excited, cue the segue, to the actual EOS R5 than yeah. the C300 Mark III way more interested in it because it seems to have you know until we actually see it until we see the images it ticks so many boxes and it's crazy what the specs of that camera do it's it's one of these cameras that we we talked about you know our last thing we did was the perfect camera yeah. and this ticks so many of those boxes in there it you know if it was just 8k you'd be like oh my god if the 4k was say a uh, like a, a two times crop for example of of that you'd be like oh for god's sake no thanks yep. but the fact that the 4k is full frame as well 
makes this very exciting for me. Absolutely. Because I, I love small cameras. I love big cameras, but I love small cameras as well. Uh, I can operate a lot quicker when I'm filming with a small camera. But also when I'm shooting sort of actuality documentary and stuff, I want a proper camera on the shoulder, a nice proper lens with mechanics and stuff. But for just general stuff and going around and just for myself, I like to have a camera that is really small, but doesn't compromise too much. And this, these specs are so good. And of course it's RF. And the great thing is that adapter, which turns the RF into EF is perfect. Yep. There is no, for me, I haven't noticed any difference in speed at yep. all. Um, you know, talking about live setup, so I'm, so I'm using the A7 III right now, and I actually had my C200 up there for half a day, as it was going to be my live camera, because I'm not really using it much. And I, I, I took it off for a very simple reason, the noisy autofocus EF lenses. They make so much noise. And I was picking it up in a quiet room because I'm close to the camera. If I'm doing an interview in far away, you don't pick it up and they're wearing a lav mic. But I heard it and I was like, oh, no, these RF lenses are nice and quiet. Um, so that's why that does the de depend an awful lot on the lens you use, though, um, just for everyone yeah. watching. Some EF lenses are noisier than others. So I don't know which lens you were using. Phil, but... Yeah, the only ones which are quiet are the STM lenses. Mm -hmm. So but then they're not as good. Lenses, them, so. not, they're not as good. Um, I had the, the I have a fifty mil one point eight, which is cheap as chips, and it's a great little lens, but it's too long for a super thirty five mil camera in this web setup. So it was no good. Mm -hmm. And so the I do have an eighteen to one three five maybe, which is a quite a slow lens, like an f five six or something two six three maybe, and it's it's useful for sort of like you know, actuality type stuff. And that, again, that autofocus is quiet, completely quiet. So I don't know, I haven't come across any, and I'm happy to be corrected because I want to know if there's any full frame EF lenses, which are silent. And when it comes to, um, I, I could really do with trying the newer Sigma lenses because the older Sigma lenses all make a noise. Mm. And it's the same when I use them on the Sony's, but the newer ones, don't they mm. don't make a noise so right now i'm actually on a 35 1.2 a native lens and it's dead silence on the sony uh, actually i think i've got a canon 105 and that's really quiet on the canons as well so i think the new the newer sigma lenses the newer art ones are, are much more quiet because the other one sounds somebody said have you is your cat purring on your camera <laughs> right now that's the focus of the sigma lens but yeah, they all make this, bad the people. Not this little noise. And so I don't have the only lens I've got that's quiet, as I say, is the 18, whatever it is, 135, which is an EFS lens. And it's silent, but it's too slow for me. Yeah. So the RF lenses are much, much better. So um, yeah. that's when you get into the whole autofocus debate about things. And, you know, but this, the, R the R5, I have no idea when it's coming out. I think we've heard that it's going to be something like three grand or so i believe we haven't heard an official anything official on pricing yet yeah um, it sounds so. about right it sounds maybe yeah it does sound about right between three and three and a half I, i'm expecting it to be and then yep. of course it price will bring come down maybe yep. but i i think that that camera would, if, if it comes out as, with the specs of what they're saying and it's as good as we're hoping it will because this is unique we yeah. never get excited about canon specs we ever. get excited after get it. using it <laughs> yeah. normally with canon the c300 was the most underwhelming specs mm. to come out when it was announced and then i got one and i loved it and everybody loved it it was yep. just, even though it was slow motion with 720p i believe and it nothing was it was super amazing it was a terrific camera whereas this camera has great specs so generally their cameras turn out to be really good um i i personally have, you know, i i i think firstly that the i think the c300 mark III um will potentially recreate some of that magic with the original c300 where the minute people start using it they really like it um i would be very interesting to see what you thought of it after shooting with it for a week two weeks um yeah, no, definitely. try it definitely mm. 
And I think a lot I mean, of I people... Love, I love the C200. I love the C200. Yeah. I think the C200 is a fantastic camera that if it had a 10-bit uh, codec, uh, it would have been you know, an absolute killer of a camera. The fact that you had to use a 12-bit RAW, which was just two big files for me for everyday documentary use, yeah. was a killer. But it's a great camera. So this is and... basically like that, but with a new sensor with much better image quality. Well, not much better, but better image quality. <laughs> um with the high frame rates with all the body advantages that the c500 bought and mm -hmm. yeah your points about whether this or the c500 they're they're certainly certainly an interesting conundrum um but i think it's going to be a very i'm already having a lot of it very interesting conversations with people about that and then an r5 as a b camera and the r5 hasn't even been properly announced yet we don't know enough about that camera yet to be really thinking uh, about it wait till you wait till you see the fx9 mark ii it's going to be a cracker <laughs> the mark three is going to be even better that's going to be a special camera so just we hold should all wait for that for right? about 20 years if you wait 20 years you're going to get the best camera ever so oh, it's always dear. worth holding off for the next best thing so we've got a couple of points on the questions all the time carl i get yeah, all these I questions know. all the time should i get this camera that's out or should i wait for this camera that's <laughs> not out yet we've got a couple already <laughs> and it's like i don't know i've never tried it we don't know if you need a camera right now then get this camera because there yep. you go if you're happy to wait six months then wait absolutely so a couple of things that i want to bring up in chat um john antaki has says it's not a cinema sensor the r5 won't look as nice as the c300 mark III. yeah that might well be possible it might be it won't have the same dynamic, dynamic range, range. Mm. yeah i don't know what a cinema sensor means but it certainly won't have the dynamic range because it will be limited to 12 stops i believe yeah. um but that's okay i'm kind of used to that anyway oh, of course i would love more but it comes down to the features and the, and the price. You know, it's like this is a much cheaper camera. I'm not saying it's a better camera than a C300 Mark III. Of course I'm not. I'm just saying it for me, the, it, it's more interesting as an FX9 owner as well. It's more interesting because it's it's very different. And that's what's exciting. Andreas is asking why the C500 Mark II and C300 Mark III are so battery hungry. The C500 probably because of full frame. Yeah, we're seeing this with a lot of the cameras now. The FX9 is more power hungry than the FS7 was. The C500, the C300 are more power hungry than the C200 is and the C300 Mark II. Um, it's part of the necessary cost of improving things um, is that these more much more powerful processes that they're able to put in and more powerful sensors and larger sensors need more juice yeah unfortunately. i mean if, if power consumption is an issue then i would recommend getting a canon 5d mark ii because it did last quite a while on one of those little batteries so i would recommend one of those which is the downside of better cameras it is a pain it is a pain how you know it's i mean nothing as bad you know not in, we there's certain cameras which we've had which are you know are way more painful than this because at least they last long enough you know the the, the old sony a7s batteries were atrocious you, you must remember yep. just how bad the black magic original black magic pocket cinema camera was with battery life yep and I, the pocket you know, 4k I'm, not I'm, even the old ones <laughs> the pocket 4K that's, is pretty i mean bad. that's bad it's not as, not as bad as the original the original one was one where i literally had to turn off my camera between every single shot because i it would drop 25 percent between shots and i'm like <laughs> so yeah i mean the black i've got i've actually just got the pocket 6k uh black magic of something we want to uh try out which is great um but yeah the battery life is no good but i've you know i already have the pocket 4k so i have the power base thingy from core swx which helps and i also have a, a rig which can take a v mount and stuff so but power consumption yeah i wish every battery could last forever but it doesn't work that way sure so fee and journey is saying why don't you build your own camera company phil because i haven't a clue about how to make a camera <laughs> i could use them but i you know i can tell you specs so if we if somebody could invent a machine that i could just pump in specs and then it would build it with a 3d printer then i'll start my own company absolutely but let's change tact again let's talk about kinney shall we our old friends kinnafinity um they've renounced the mavo edge 
Now, this is a little bit further behind some of the other cam new cameras that we've seen. This isn't a working camera yet. They have a prototype, but most of what we've got is just feature specs and um, 3D renders, things like that. But I don't know about you, Phil, but this is incredibly exciting. Yeah, I mean, it's, and I've been using Kinefinity for two and a half years now since the Terra 4K. I think that cameras are fantastic. Um, this, I mean, just physically looks beautiful. Yeah. What a lovely design. It is so nice. And to be able to use, I mean, that side display is great. To be able to use VLOX on the back without having to have the, the extra base, it keeps things Where's really this? nice and tight. The, I love that the, um, the BPU battery play is in the middle of the VLOX. I mean, yeah, it's not perfect because really, but... it means that it can be knocked off sideways. So it's not perfect, yeah. but what an amazing use of space. It's great. Uh, I love the fact that, okay. uh, you know, I just, I just love the fact that we have dual SSD slots. It doesn't mean you have to yes. use uh, small things, but you know, I'm a big, you know, proponent for dual recording. Uh, yep. Something the FX9 is missing still on yep. the higher end recording is there's no dual slot recording. This is really important to have a redundant backup. The specs look terrific. Absolutely. I think this is going to be a great camera. I think the Marvo LF is just, you know, I've been shooting a lot more with it recently. And I, I just think it's a terrific camera. My, the only things I don't like about the Marvo LF is simply the control of EF lenses is still clunky. Sure. Um, so manual lenses work way nicer with it. It does work. It's just a bit clunky. And the audio um, controls are nowhere near as good as you'll get with a Canon or a Sony. Sure. So yeah. I'm, I'm, but I, as, as a feature and it doesn't pack look camera. like most of those two, those two things will change here with the edge. Um, whether or not they're bringing out new lens mounts, that could, they've got the potential to barely easily change the lens problem by with new lens mounts. They won't have to bring out a new camera to do that. They could do that yeah. with existing cameras and these because of a new lens mount. But um, the audio will stay the same, really, won't it? Yeah, I mean, most of the, the issue with the audio is actually a lot of it's down to software. And they fixed it with a firmware last year, beginning okay. of last year, I think, where they, they gave you individual control of channels. Because initially, yes. you couldn't change the levels on each channel. But the moment it's still too steppy, it's not enough, not, not small enough increments. That's the biggest yeah. issue with it for me. Um, but other, I mean, this camera, you know, specs wise, looks. this looks like a really exciting camera. And there's the door. What am I going to do? This happened last. Door? No. Yeah, you get. Oh, I'm, all I'm all right. I'll throw this to you. And what we do, you can get a nice focus on the background, which is deliberately out of focus because it's a mess. Let me just see who it is. Oh. Okay. Let, let me, while we're waiting for Phil, let me run through some of the, um, the specs of the Kinney before he comes back. So um, the Kinney, this is the Mavo Edge, um, so their new flagship. It's a really good price as well, ten thousand five hundred. I'm I'm really I'm amazed by the price. That didn't take long. No, okay. it was a, a mistake. A mistake. <laughs> the UPS so, driver just wanted to come say hi. Oh, he just missed you, did he? Yeah. So I mean, obviously, we've got the new physical body that we've talked about. There's some amazing yeah. frame rate capabilities. If I bring that up. Uh, mm. Let me just go back to uh, my laptop screen. Um, yeah, in the yeah. full frame, you get 8K, and yeah. that's up to 75 frames a second if you go for 8K wide. That's and you can... yeah. Okay, so what about full, full um, height 8K? What do we get so for that? So full height 8K um, is this one, so 60, 60 frames a second. That's terrific, isn't it? In 8K. I mean, it's nuts. Everybody needs 8K60. Everybody needs it. It's amazing. It's what we need and right then... now. I need it. I need it for my B-roll. <laughs> It'll be more cinematic. My, my B-roll will be way more cinematic in 8K. We all know this. The higher the resolution, the better your footage will be. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, maybe going up to high resolutions has drawbacks. It has advantages. Um... We can debate yeah. that till the cows come home. It's perfectly it's, honest. It's nice to be. It's nice to have it. It's not as long as it's I don't nice know what is it. what happens with our four K. Are we are we having a super sample down? Yeah, so it will oversample both in six K and four K in ten in full frame. So they've taken off um, Italy. 
I need to clarify that. I'm not sure if they can do 1080p full frame down sampling. I think they might be able to now, actually. Um, that needs clarifying. Mm -hmm. But I know you can definitely get 6K and 4K using the full width of the sensor down sampled um, properly. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can do that up to 60 frames a second. As long as the, you know, the, the 1080p and the higher frame rate don't, by using the full sensor, don't have a downside of having you know, substantial wiring and aliasing. No, they shouldn't uh, do. Then I want it. I'd rather have a one-to-one -one crop. I mean, it's something we've had, I have with the Z cams in the, the HDs are all, um, then none of them are cropping and the image quality very much suffers yeah. in HD because of that. So, yeah. um, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, it comes back to Canon and like the C500 Mark II, the high frame rate crops one to one mm -hmm. to get the high frame rate. But not all their cameras do that. You know, the C3, sorry, the 1DX Mark III maintains the full sensor at the high frame rate. And this new C300 so Mark III does it. The C300 yeah, Mark III so be nice, uses yeah, be nice. a second. I think it's nice to be able to have the option of both. Um, well, that's we what had Kenny the FS7. Yeah, we don't have it with the FX number. We had it with the FS7. We could do a one-to-one -one crop, or we could use the whole sensor. So it's um, something that I like. But yeah, this this is a fantastic spec camera. I mean, again, we talked a little bit about ProRes RAW internally. Um, we'll see what happens with that. I hope they're able to to pull it off because yeah. ProRes RAW is a nice codec. But um, absolutely, it, it's it's got it's a very exciting spec wise camera. Yeah, um, I think even if I mean, the pre-res raw, even if you ignore the yeah. pre-res raw side of it, I've, had, I've got one down here actually. Yeah, give us a look. Like just yeah, yeah, let's, I can't show. Let's it go full much. screen for that. <laughs> yeah, uh, just just let you know this. It's amazing. Unfortunately, it's it's literally just a printout from a. a <laughs> <regular>. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, what I think it does really well is um, it gives you oversampling modes, it gives you Super 35 modes, and even in further. And because of that new 8K sensor, it means that it's a better Super 35 camera in some ways than the Mavo LF would be because of the higher resolution. Um, and you it's get the highest frame rate. The highest overall would be down cropping into 2K mm. wide, and that gives 300. you two, 300. Yeah, there you go. Hmm. Okay. 300 that frames a second. Can't wait to do a little montage with that. Yeah, absolutely. That is. Because I've only got 260. Montage all the over. I've got. Yeah, that'll be good. I look forward to that. I'm still waiting for cameras to have 500 proper, you know. It's something that we haven't really had a big increase in. We, you know, it's still a very specialist camera to have anything, you know, like 500. I mean, we, we can get it with some real crops on reds and stuff but too much so i'm i'm i want some proper high frame rate cameras that don't cost the earth proper high frame rate cameras oh what ones where you, frames tick, where you record for one second and you get a 65 minute clip that's what yeah I want. that would be great wouldn't it <laughs> basically it's still frame essentially Right. Uh, I'm just clarifying, trying to look on King Infinity's website about the 1080p oversampling. Uh, we've got a couple of other questions. Um, in effect, is the Mavo and Edge every other King Infinity camera ever combined with the new resolution specs? I guess you mean the high frame rates of the Terra and the large format of the Mavo LF? Yeah, in some ways. I mean, it looks like it's, yeah, because the, the LF doesn't have the same high frame rates as the Terra in certain uh, it doesn't go up the highest amount but it, still, it goes pretty close though it does go pretty close as long as you're willing to crop it so i mean it just it's a, it's a really exciting camera and i hope it doesn't take too long to come out absolutely hmm. okay kevin roberts is asking touchy subject but with the kin of, with the chinese government aggressively defensive posture on the pandemic are you concerned about the reliability of support and service from mainland chinese companies in the near future um no is my short answer to that. Um, Kin Affinity have now grown to the place where actual Chinese HQ is not really directly involved in the majority of support cases anymore. Um, and that we've seen this with uh, loads of other Chinese companies like DGI, for example, a great example of this, where you, you don't really need to think that they're a Chinese company. They, you don't have to get involved with China at all by being a DGI customer. Um, yeah. And Kinney are now getting to that point. They've got a European um, 
uh, distributor now, which is basically becoming a European part of Kinefinity, and that's where we get all of our cameras repaired um, and everything like that. What we can't do in house, and we get our stock from. So, um, other well, could you imagine from... if that this did actually, you know, there was an actual true issue? It's not just we're talking on such a massive effect on everything that we use, not just these cameras, yeah, everything that come, everything in my office here. I'm sure pretty much everything has something from China in yep. there. So <laughs> we'd be pretty screwed if that happens. So, yeah, I, I shouldn't. We're also seeing Frosty saying that from Aperture to Mavo, he's he's a bit concerned about working with Chinese brands. I, I don't think there's any need for that at all. Um, would you agree, Phil? No, I have. It's not even crossed my mind about something that I'm concerned no. about. No. I don't think it's gonna. I mean, you know, if you're in America, maybe with the current administration, you know, he could do something really stupid and really crack down. But, but you know, as you I said, it would hurt the majority of things. Um, uh, the realistic, yeah, it, it would be, the, the the ramifications would be so massive yeah. on everything that every every manufacturing thing that they do relies upon stuff from there. So. As much as you know, he could want to do something. There's certain things that it's just not possible. So I'm, I, I don't. I don't it's not something I'm concerned about. No. no, I completely agree. And if it is something to be concerned about, that's our thing to be concerned about as a dealer. That's what. That's why, as customers, you would buy from a professional, reputable dealer is that you've got us to fall back on as a middle ground between the manufacturer and you as a customer. So. Uh, if it, even if it is a problem, it's our problem, not necessarily your problem. Right. Okay. Uh, it's probably time to move on to the next camera. Now, a, a camera? I think you have one of these on your desk, do you? You mean the Fuji X-T4 that's finally started shipping? <laughs> it's taken ages since they announced it. They announced it ages ago. Um, but... Uh, this is now my oh i got the xt2 the xt3 no the xt2 xh1 gfx 50s xt3 gfx 100 and now this so i've got no, a fair few bragging. Fuji bodies <laughs> uh, and i need to get i need to set i've got a couple of them definitely all boxed up ready to sell the gfx 100 is still magnificent this is a great camera this is a really great camera. I mean, I'm going to get straight off with my big gripe about it. Um, it's a minor gripe, but it's still a gripe. And it's the first time I've seen um, an XD camera ship without a bloody battery charger. What's that about? It's not a mobile phone. I do not want to charge my batteries through my camera. I had to spend 60 quid on this dual charger, which itself doesn't even come with a bloody cable or plug. It's and a, it's like it's I, felt, I, it's I do mic. find it very strange because that's a very consumer way of doing things you know you buy most consumer cameras consumer they, camera. they don't think but that's what makes the xt4 so exciting is that they haven't put consumer features in there at all they've put really high-end professional features into what could very easily have been a consumer camera it, I probably I, wouldn't have minded so confusing. much had it been the old batteries. And I'm glad they've got new batteries because it's so much, the new batteries are so much better. I have so many XT3 style chargers. Sure. So the fact is, I don't have any for this. And I'm like, oh, for God's sake, do I really? So, you know, but it's other than that minor gripe, the camera itself has really impressed so far. The stabilization is so much better than the XH1. It, the IBIS is so good. And you combine it with its electronic um, stabilization, which gives you a 1.1 crop, I believe, uh, on top of it, is wow, really, really good. Um, I mean, the one thing, again, it's lens dependent, is the autofocus still isn't brilliant. It is it's good with some lenses, and others, it's really not good at all. My Have you seen any improvement then, over the X-T3? Because that was a bit like that on the X-T3, wasn't it? I... I haven't noticed anything massive on some. I haven't tried every lens. So, I mean, the 35 uh, 1.4, 
still goes in out in out in out to try and get something it's sure. it's, it's annoying the the 10 to whatever it is the wide angle lens is very smooth and quiet works really well but it was yep. before i'm not fine you know i if anybody has an experience of lenses in the comments of what they found to be really good fuji lenses for autofocus i'd love to know because i do want to get something which is better because i do have quite a few but most of them are old and i looked up firmware to see if there's any new firmware to make them better and there isn't them pretty much all the, the lenses i've got the last firmware was in 2016. Mm. so i think i've, I've heard it's... the the newer primes which are the slower aperture ones and the cheaper ones yeah. are faster and better in autofocus i think that's, that's what i've heard um because you know they do basically two lineups of every single um lens so they've got a 35 millimeter for example f1.4 which is certainly not big by any stretch of the imagination it's tiny mm. um but then they've got an even smaller 35 millimeter f2 um mm. i think those newer smaller um high f, f stop ones. try one i mean i've got i mean i want a 35 mil full frame equivalent that is it's got a really nice autofocus that's what i'd really love to get mm. Because uh, I've got uh, some really nice lenses there, 56, 1.2. It is a beautiful yeah. lens. Yeah, Sharath is just putting the its... thing, um, the 16mm f1.4, and then, like you say, the, the 56 f1.2. And like you said, they're mm. amazing lenses. I don't think of them as particularly good autofocus lenses, though. No, I, I mean, uh, it's they're okay. I mean, you can tell my issue is autofocus right now because I actually have a manual focus lens on it. Mm. A 35 1.2 i believe it is slr magic uh yeah. 1.4 1.4 with a really close focus um but i mean it's interesting because the gfx 100 um has phase detection autofocus and it definitely feels it's definitely better it's not great but it it's definitely better than here but the lenses are newer on the yep. gfx system of course so I just, if, yeah, I'd love some, some, any experience that people have in the comments of lenses, which they found to be much, much better would be great because I think this is a brilliant camera. The, the specs, the features of this are, are fantastic. The, you know, 10 bit, 400 megabits per second recording internally in HU65 is great. You've got 10 bit out. Uh, although I, I, I got to give you a warning. I really feel that you need to get yourself, if you're going to be using an HDMI out of these cameras, You've got to get yourself a cage and you've got yeah. to get yourself an HDMI clamp on it because these HDMI ports, micro HDMI ports on Fuji cameras, in my experience, are very dodgy uh, in that they're not that strong. And the first time I went out with the X-H1, very first time I knocked it and it broke the HDMI and it's directly connected to the motherboard. The whole thing had to be replaced. Yeah. So I've already ordered a small H, a small rig cage um for this uh just so you could do that and also with my xd3 i actually didn't have that i used an l uh an l bracket um adapter but it also had quarter 20s down the side so i could put an hdmi clamp on that but um there's just just a warning if you are going to use hdmi on it but the flip out screen is is useful obviously if you you want to film yourself um and you know, the image quality, I haven't shot much at all with it. I've done mostly some stills, but I, I'm blown away by how good the stabilization is. Yeah, and that's I the mean, big thing. The X-T3 is a great camera that I didn't use yeah. because the only lenses I had with OIS, um, I had two. I had the big long telephoto and the super wide angle zoom. And all my lovely primes looked terrible handheld the micro jitters were atrocious so i didn't use them didn't use the camera much at all so this is fantastic this camera you know combined with say their mkx fuji lenses yeah the zooms you know cinema zooms will be terrific it's not a bad shout it's actually so, they they do so, those in mk in, in uh whatever the, the fuji mount is what's the fuji mount yeah Z mount uh the x mount x mount yeah and i've got the um i've got a full set of slr magic cine uh, micro primes um obviously not autofocus but they they work well with it as well yeah um so but yeah i mean it's for the for stabilization it's just i'm so impressed if you combine ois 
and the um, IBIS and electronic stabilization. It's got a magnificent floaty feel to it. It's not, I don't, I don't want it to be rock, rock, rock steady. I want it to be nice and organically a little bit like a bit of floaty movement. And, and the great thing is you can, you know, turn off these different things to make it as, as strong. You can't dial in exactly how strong you want it to be, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a massive improvement over the XH1s, which are not very good IBIS at all. It was very jerky. It was like, it was okay for static shots where you just wanted to try and hold it steady and do a slower aperture. But if you ever tried to move that camera, it was not good. Yeah. So it's quite an impressive little beast actually, isn't it? Because it can do 10 bit 4K um, and 4K 50p. Um, 50p, 60p, yeah. It's got the lovely profiles in it. It's got log in there as well. Um, it's got loads. It's got loads of the great things that Fuji have, like the raw development for photos in there. The app has got a lot better. It's still not the best app in the world. But it's got a lot better for transferring stuff across and a bit of control. Um, I feel I like the physical controls on the top still. I do really love those because I can change. You know, I know you change the shutter speed and the aperture just with these dials. I really love that. Mm -hmm. uh, the EVF is nice. Um, it's a nice size and it's not an, that expensive a camera for what it is. It is great. That, that's you know, it's the interesting frame. bit. It's, it, it's, it's it is really great. quite cheap. And yeah. I mean, where do you think this now is going to sit in the market? I mean, I guess this is sort of GH5 market level, right? If you, if you were interested yeah, I mean, in GH5, it, this, is, yeah. this is that better. same level of camera and better. It's better for sure than the GH5. Um, We'll see what the GH6 is like when it comes out, because I'm sure it's very overdue. Um, so we'll see what happens when that comes out. But the um, it does, you know, it does the high bit, you know, what the GH5 does, the high bit rate, 10 bit internal recording of yeah. 4K60 with a larger sensor, much, much better features. So and the stabilization, and great, which was a huge a, reason that people bought this GH5 was that stabilization and how good it was. Yeah. And the and the and not, don't, let's not forget one of the most important things the photographs, the stills from it are terrific. Absolutely. Which are never great out of the GH5. So I have a so, X-T3 and I only really ever use it as a stills camera. It's just my, my stills camera. It's my, my yeah. home stills camera. I, I love it. I've all been very happy with the, not for professional work at all, but just very happy with the photos. I think they're lovely. Yeah. That um, bit, I mean, one thing I would definitely warn are. about, if you are going to shoot log, never shoot anything other than the 10-bit h265 yep. yep. because the the 8 bit from the camera in log is not good it bans like well more bands and more it's, it bans more than glastonbury there you go <laughs> not a great uh, but it is terrible i'd so like when i shot my gfx it's the same with the gfx 100 when i shot with my gfx 100 for a documentary in august I didn't plan to, for it to go on as long as I needed to. I ended up running out of space and hard drives and I switched to 8-bit and I wish I'd never done it because I had to throw away so many shots because the sky just went awful, awful. Mm. And it's the same with, with this. So the 8-bit isn't great. If you're shooting log, if you're shooting one of the profiles, you can get away with it. The, the Eterna, for example, you can get away with it. And Eterna's a lovely profile. Mm, definitely. <laughs> Um, Reno is asking about lenses. Um, he says he's a Fuji shooter, but primarily for photos because he says Fuji doesn't really have great lenses for great. video. Depends on mm. your video needs, like autofocus. And I think that is really interesting. Um, like Reno also says that the F2 lenses are great for autofocus, but it's nearly impossible to use manual focus. Really tricky to find an effective Fuji kit. Um, mm. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I mean, they. Because they have got, for each individual thing that you might look for in a lens, they've got great choices. Like if you want a great video mm. lens, they make the MK lenses and they do them in X amount. Mm. You can't really get a better, unless if you want autofocus, but a better video lens for a small camera like that, there isn't really one that exists that's better than those MK lenses. They're awesome. Um, yeah. If you want small lenses, they've got a huge advantage because those little primes, are tiny mm. you know you can carry a full set of 10 primes with you in a little over the shoulder bag if you really wanted to perfectly comfortably mm. they're tiny yeah i mean if you're going to use it as a vlogging camera which of course with the flip out screen you can totally do that yep and i say they're, they're wide angle 
is got very good autofocus. Um, it's quiet. Yeah. It's obviously not not super fast, but it works yeah. really well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just I just I think it's just that they're very old. I think they're just very old lenses. That the thirty I I, I thirty five mil was my favorite focal length for just having it on the camera the whole time. So I just would love to see like a, a 24 mil 1.4, 1.8 from them, which would give me that field of view. Yeah. Um, that has, as a modern lens, it has great autofocus capability because the camera may well have it, but most of the lenses are, t are very old and therefore suffer. So I think it's definitely, I'm going to, I'm going to get in touch with, uh, with Fuji and see if I can borrow some of their newer lenses and just test them out because I think it's yeah. such a great camera and I love I just love shooting with it yeah it's it's really quick for stills and the video is really nice and it's got a dedicated this was it, what's a much better improvement on this instead of having to use this dial to you know which is normally for your um your drive mode for stills where you have a video part of it it's no longer on that you just have a switch on here instead between video and stills which is so much better yeah. so it's really easy to switch between video and stills whereas before it was like oh, it's like you know you know with a, with a sony camera obviously you can shoot video by hitting record which is really nice and i love that but if you want to go from you know just one of your normal mo like a manual mode in stills to switch to a proper video mode on the dial you've got to remember how many clicks it needs to go before it and it will show you in the screen but it's like is that it is that it? almost it, almost there it's like we had just having a switch like the Canon camera is just not the EOS R which I hate the way it switches to video I hate it so much but the Canon 7D little switch video mode that's what you want I don't want to press one button on top and then info and then switch Absolutely. which is what the EOS R is but I love that I, I can't record so far I'm I've had it two days yeah. um I think it's fantastic and just budget 60 pounds for a dual charger and you'll Sweet. need to use your USB-C cable that comes with the camera too unless yeah. you've probably got loads anyway got one. but and you do need to get I mean the batteries last a lot longer they do last a lot longer okay, I have good. three mm -hmm. and I'm I'm happy with three I think that will last me a good day's filming and to keep some perspective on the on the lenses front um if, if you compare it to any other small camera like that in that range, like the GH5, for example, was always a very similar situation. The native lenses, they had compromises in each different area. If you went for a, I mean, the autofocus was never great anyway, but if you went for an adapter, the autofocus would get even worse and um, the stabilization wouldn't work as well and all of this sort of stuff. So if you just think of it as almost a GH5 replacement, the lenses situation has improved, in my opinion. Stabilization um, is magnificent on this. It really is the best that I've come across. I mean, I haven't tried an Olympus, mind you. Everybody talked about the Olympus being amazing. I've not tried those. But like, with the GH5, you put a big wide angle on it. You get this nasty warping on it. Um, the wide angle on this with the stabilization, fabulous. Really fabulous. Absolutely. Really, right, really let's... Happy. Um... We're getting a little bit over time, but I just want the last thing that was on the list to talk about was this. Yep. Um, this is a new shooter article about the Panasonic S1H getting raw. And the S1H, I think we've just been almost bad mouthing a little bit. The GH5, the GH5 is still a lovely camera, by the way. Um, but the S1H is something really exciting from Panasonic that they're doing. And this makes it even more exciting um as yeah. it, it almost fits this strange middle ground niche part of the market now where it's one of these small mirrorless cameras a bit like the 1dx always used to where or the 1dc where it's a small little mirrorless small camera advantages but a big mm. chunky professional body if some people like the small cameras like the xt4 some people hate them find them fiddly to use and if they, if you're one of those people mm. the s1h is a brilliant camera yeah, I mean, I've got one at the moment. So I've had it a couple of weeks. And, you know, if it had great autofocus, it would be the best mirrorless camera out there by far. Uh, you know, but I know autofocus isn't a be all and end all. And people say, oh, I'll just use manual lens. And that's fine. I just, but even for stills, it's it's a pain. I, I like to take photographs. But I think as a, as a, if you're just using it with manual lenses as a video camera, it's incredibly impressive 
great stabilization. It's got the best flip screen out there because it not only flips out, it flips up because the downside with most flip out screen, well, all flip out screens is if you just want to tilt it, you can't. You just you have to put it all the way out and then do that. Actually, one of the best things about flip out screens, even if you don't use it, you know, filming yourself is the fact that you can protect your LCD screen, which is Absolutely. a big deal. I've got an S1H um, here. So, what, what Philip is talking about is that, yes, it can flip out like that. But then on the bottom, there's a little clasp, which means that this entire screen, let me pull it that way, can come away from it like that, which is a really nice little design. Yeah, it's a really impressive camera. It's, it, it's, it's a beast. It's, it's, it's quite expensive compared to the S1, yeah. which is actually a pretty much a real bargain, but it obviously does a lot more video wise. The S1 still does a lot of stuff and you can buy a vlog upgrade for it and stuff. Uh, but this one actually is a beast of a camera it really is and with ProRes RAW it's going to be even better the internal recording let's not let's not complain about it because the internal recording is great but of course it's you know it's ProRes RAW is going to be better it is better I haven't I'm any day hoping to get some some firmware off the S1H before I have to give the camera back uh, for ProRes RAW so I'm hoping to be able to try it because yeah, I'm, I'm, official... I'm very new to ProRes RAW but I'm hoping Okay. The official launch of the firmware, I think, is the 25th of May, I think, is the, is the official one. Oh, see if I can, see if I can try and extend my, because I've, I've, got, I've, got, it, I've um, got it rented from Hire a Camera at the moment. They, mm. they, gave, it, they gave it to me to, to, to use, because obviously Hire companies are not doing very well right now, which, of course, Nobody's sucks. Doing it, um, yeah. So anyway, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, if we've got time, we could just play that little clip, which is a bit of fun. Oh yes, absolutely. We can do that. Disconnected. Because um, you know, I'm, so... making, I'm, I'm, I am a YouTuber right now. Uh, I have to be, <laughs> and so I'm trying to make as many videos as I can. And I've got loads which are almost finished. And this was the last thing I did. Oh, sorry, I played it a bit early. There you go. <laughs> this is my intro to the Mavic Air. Two. And if, if you don't know, if you don't know what uh, what that is an homage to, then shame on you. <laughs> Get watching it right now. That is my ode to apocalypse now, mm -hmm. and I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd love to have had some beautiful golden sun uh, me coming out toward from that. That would have been a great shot, but that was filmed in my garden. Yes, uh, I did what I could, and that's the joy of the autofocus. You saw that autofocus there. Because I'm not going to be able to fly a drone and pull focus as the drone comes towards you. So the joy of autofocus. Absolutely. Sorry for everyone who's watching for me launching that a little bit early. I pressed a button. I'm using a new system here. Pressed a button that I didn't think would take it live and it did take it live. Um, okay, let's finish up with just a couple of questions. Um, Sharath is saying thoughts on Blackmagic RAW in other cameras, and Benjamin is saying it would be great to see the S1H work with Blackmagic Video Assist 12G to shoot Blackmagic RAW. Um, it is a really interesting one, isn't it? Because the, the cameras that we're starting to see come out with the, Nin the Atomos partnerships where they can record ProRes RAW now are almost all doing it over HDMI. And this is something that nearly everyone in the industry always thought was never possible of happening mm -hmm. is raw signals over basically just raw data streams coming out over HDMI. Now, I would love someone cleverer than me to take that apart and figure out how that is working. Um, but that is remarkable and something that I never thought would happen. Um, I can tell you exactly how they do it. It's yeah. called technology. <laughs> technology they and put some and technology in, in their coat. cauldron <laughs> and then yeah those those boffins in their white coats they're doing some magnificent technology stuff those so boffins. they'll probably be able to put it out of a 3.5 millimeter jack next before yeah. you know it never know <laughs> but well, yeah, yeah I mean, who knows now the black magic raw i mean it's obviously a big selling point for their for their cameras 
and their video assists and DaVinci Resolve, of course. Hence, I can't imagine, I can't see a, anything soon where we can have ProRes raw support in DaVinci Resolve, for example. It doesn't make any business sense for them. Hence, it's going to be B-Raw. So, um, and also why I can't imagine them letting Adobe and especially Final Cut have let them use B-Raw anytime yeah. soon. That one I don't think is going to happen. It's business. But I think the it's support business. in Resolve might happen because, of course, they need Resolve to be their flagship. Resolve is for Blackmagic in this, like the Mac Pro or, and all its fancy overpriced accessories is for Apple. Yeah. Where yeah, they're, I mean, they're not doing it because it's going to be a really great seller for them. They're doing it to establish yeah. their position as a really respected brand that make these amazing things. And I hope they do because they, I really hope they do because my experience, so I can't, I did actually shoot my very first ProRes raw video last week uh, using the Zcam E2 yeah. and using the Atomus in Ninja 5. And it's the first time I've, apart from a, a couple of tests, I've actually edited with it. And I, I'm not great with Final Cut. And I'm using Resolve at the moment for what I'm learning to use my main edit program. But I ended up editing it with Adobe Premiere uh, and with the beta version, which you can access via. If you go onto the Creative Cloud panel on the left hand side, it has beta apps. You can download one that works with ProRes Raw. And if you're on Windows, you just need to download the beta 1.1 plugin. So just Google ProRes Raw Windows and you can download that. And it works. It's the raw controls within Premiere of a primitive but it does work and you want the joy of the, the controls and the color that you get within resolve that's what you want yeah at the moment pro is raw the best way to edit with it is within final cut pro 10 because and it, it has always much... been a criticism of pro is raw that they they don't have the traditional raw controls that we would be more familiar no. with from black magic raw and reds raw or those sorts of raw formats particularly reds one where you can really change the iso and all of that sort of stuff now their argument is that all of that is just simply raising exposure up and down before debayering and that's what pro is raw is doing just by the normal color changing yeah. tools within final cut um so you can debate both sides of it but the, the best the best way to work with pro's raw that i've come across is within final cut pro 10 and can just on each clip on the info just turn it into s log 3 s gamut 3 cine i always get the, the order <laughs> wrong and then you can download some of Alistair Chapman's LUTs for that, which give it a lovely Venice look. Yeah. Fantastic workflow. Um, and it's a joy if you do it that way, it really is. Because at the moment when you're editing in Premiere with it, you're working in Rec 709. Um, so basically it's actually really fiddly to actually work with it because it is very new um, and the controls aren't there. But it's a, it's within within Final Cut 10, it works great, and and I hope it comes to resolve because obviously there's no better software for color grading out there. I am very hopeful opinion. that it will come to resolve. Um, like I said, Blackmagic do need Resolve to be that flagship product. It's their yeah. only one of their products that is used at no matter what level of the industry, even right up at the highest end. Sure, people are using base yeah. lights and things like that, but there are high end Hollywood films and all the rest of it shot on Resolve, shot on Resolve, using Resolve. Um, that's their flagship product, yeah. if I you mean, like. Hopefully, whatever issue there is at the moment with Blackmagic and Apple, that they can maybe get it resolved. Yep. <laughs> What a terrible joke. I'll oh, get my dear. cut. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's cut away from Phil, shall we? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, last little one from Matt Oliver. He just says, any Komodo chit-chat? Uh, so yeah, I didn't include the Komodo on this just simply because we haven't had anything official from Red um, on it. When's it coming yeah. out? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, at least that has the RF mount on it does have an rf mount on it yep but no choice for anything else but it, yep does have an and it's RF not full frame well that doesn't matter because you can put a pl adapter on it and you can put an ef adapter on an rf mount it's fine yep um but i you know it's not a full frame camera so you're not going to get the huge the main benefit of an rf mount but yep. uh, you know the, com the commode the commode what you want to call it um <laughs> i don't think they call cool. it the commode <laughs> 
No, but it's easy to call it that accidentally. So uh, it looks cool. It's, you know, it's one of these cameras, which is, is it, when's it coming out? That, that's the thing. Cause I Again, feel like we don't know. It's been announced a while ago. Well, it hasn't been announced. This is the strange thing with the Red Komodo oh, is that it's only been teased on Jared Land's Instagram page so far. All right. It's been, so, teased, it's been teased for a while. It has, um, yeah. So uh, we've seen images of what it looks like. Um, I'd like it. I'd like it to come out. I think it, it'll be good for them to, to come out with a camera which competes with that lower end. So, I mean, other than that, what did we have before that? It was the Scarlet, I guess, maybe? Uh, the know. Scarlet and the Raven. The Scarlet was the, the first Raven, one, then there, they did the Raven. The Raven. Probably, the Raven was the one that you could buy in the Apple Store, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, the problem with those cameras it was always that they um they weren't that much more affordable than their dsm 2 cameras and so it was almost like buying a dsm 2 camera that wasn't any as good yeah. and the it was like you say it was the same accessories which you did need to make it a running a working camera um whereas the komodo is something very different from them it's looking like they will work much more friendly with third-party accessories third-party media third-party monitors yeah. third-party batteries all the rest of it um, it looks it looks good i hope they i hope it comes out soon you know it looks it looks good and absolutely. i do personally feel that kinefinity have filled that void for me in in that sort of type of camera yep. but and you know we shall see what um you know what happens yeah i mean it's an interesting situation we've got a new kinefinity camera that's higher priced and higher end than the new red camera which is a lower end one so <laughs> it, yeah, it's an interesting Matt, rever but... role reversal yeah, but look at the look at the you know how much is the eight K Vista Vision red, and then you know then you've got to go and go, oh actually that's a lot more money than the uh, the new Kin Infinity so yeah anyway it's not you know they all all cameras are fantastic and I've got far too many and so but yeah I love them so you've been you saying go. you've had far too many cameras and you don't need any more for years now for so yeah and I just Which bought a new one. To to finish up, which one of those things that we've just been talking about do you uh, do you think you are most excited about? What really stands out uh, from the crowd for you? Well, uh, if we're talking, you know, firmware from the obviously the, the, the FX9 is very important to me. But if we're talking about new cameras, then certainly the it's it's a it's a tough one. It's 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 a it's a pretty much a close tie between the R5 and the new Kin Infinity um the the edge isn't it called the edge i keep forgetting yeah the mavo edge yep edge it's on yeah it's the edge i don't know whether they have got it licensed from the edge whether he has allowed them to use it <laughs> could have some legal issues there i do believe red are coming out with the bono soon so we shall see how well they compete with each other terrible dream. <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh yeah i think that's really interesting the r5 and the um and the r5 just get me very excited because it's it, it's just so nice to have a canon launch where we're all so excited about the specs before the launch when did I that mean, last happen it did it, I, yeah. the Hasn't last happened. time was the 1dx mark no no that was exp i don't know i don't know I because i don't think it has happened bought, <laughs> we've never been overwhelmed by or excited by specs from a canon stills camera so yeah hopefully they deliver but absolutely i think that was a really great roundup chat thank you for everyone who watched and put great comments down there and thank you for joining us phil thank you for taking your time you're welcome welcome have a absolutely. lovely rest of the day I'm going to get stuck in with some more editing. Oh, right. joy. Um, of course. So thank you all for watching. And if you want to buy any of the things that we've been talking about on today's um, live stream, of most of them are all of them, all of them at once. Uh, most of them are pre-orders at the moment and we have them up for pre-order or to buy now if they're available now up on proov.co.uk. But yep, thank you. Yeah, all. If you're stuck, if you, don't, if you don't know which one to buy and you're concerned, get them all and then you can't lose. <laughs> that's been your philosophy for the last 10 years isn't it <laughs> almost yeah okay thank you all for watching thank you very much phil and we'll see you next time yes bye
XS Wireless Digital is the perfect wireless audio solution for content creators and filmmakers. Thanks to a 